There was a bit of an oily wrench thrown into the works of the midterm elections just a week ago when OPEC and its allies announced that they're going to be cutting back oil production. Saudi Arabia and Russia came out as leaders of the OPEC plus energy cartel. They said that they were gonna do their first large production cut in more than two years, specifically in a bid to raise the price of oil, which is great you know, for all of us who believed it was already too high. No, it's gonna be higher. They're gonna cut 2 million barrels a day, which represents about 2% of global oil production. Now in theory, that should result in a price increase of something like 2%. But we know how price gouging works. That's not how it's gonna work. Prices are gonna go up much more than that. Now, in response to that, Joe Biden and his staff announced that he'd be reevaluating the entire relationship with Saudi Arabia and expressed openness to retaliatory measures offered by congressional Democrats, such as curbing arms sales or permitting legal action against the cartel. So that was their initial response. Now, that was what they said publicly. Behind the scenes, they were apparently working with Saudi Arabia to try to avoid this. Well, now let's fast forward to this week. And what's the status of this? Well, Joe Biden told Jake Tapper in an interview that just came out last night, there's going to be some consequences for what they've done with Russia. The president didn't say what his options are or what timetable they'd be working with. He said, I'm not gonna get into what I'd consider and what I have in mind. But there will be consequences and considering how consequential this entire topic is, I find it frustrating that we don't know. But something should probably be done, especially considering the people we're talking about are not otherwise awesome countries that are now messing with the price of oil. They've got problems of their own. Each has invaded and effectively invaded a sovereign country and is doing terrible, grievous damage to the civilian populations there. But anyway, they did apparently work behind the scenes. Um, All last week, lobbying efforts by the Biden administration to get some OPEC members to pump more oil in response to this, but they weren't doing it. And this is with the backdrop of multiple other influential Democrats pushing for more to be done in response to the announced cuts. Uh, Just this weekend, Ro Khanna and Senator Richard Blumenthal announced legislation that would immediately halt all US arms sales to Saudi Arabia, something that they of course had been in favor of before, but this makes it a little bit easier to sell. It shouldn't be difficult, but that's how it works. Um, Last week, three House Democrats introduced a bill that would require the complete removal of US troops and missile defense systems from both Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And a couple days ago, Bernie Sanders tweeted, if Saudi Arabia, one of the worst violators of human rights in the world, wants to partner with Russia to jack up US gas prices, it can get Putin to defend its monarchy. We must pull all US troops out of Saudi Arabia, stop selling them weapons and end its price fixing oil cartel. And so in theory, we could pull our troops out and they could have Russian soldiers defend them. And we've gotten a pretty good idea throughout this year of the value of that (laughs) sort of defense. But anyway, JR, what do you think? Well, this is what I think many people, even the casual watchers, people who don't know what's going on internationally, which I think is probably a vast majority of people, you know the makeup of of this partnership or this war, and even with with how Russia has invaded Ukraine and the battles happening and all the news we hear, this is one of those things based off of the response of American politicians, specifically the president, Bernie Sanders, folks who are upset about this whole thing because as you're going to get to, I think how this coordination may seem like it's something to assist also with Republicans on top of them just trying to price gouge off of maybe frustration or even anything else that's being said or done. But their response in saying, we're gonna pull troops out. No more of this support and arms and, 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 uh, and gun sales to you guys. No more of this, no more of that. You mean there's something you guys could have done, you're saying, right? So you're illustrating there's something you could have done when there's other egregious human rights violations, uh, kidnapping and murdering of a journalist that Again, from both the last two presidents, from Trump also to Biden, still haven't done much about. And then when they said, we're gonna hold these guys accountable, we're gonna go have a meeting with them, we're gonna talk to them and tell them what's going on. And you walk away with your head down and go, we talked to him and he said, F you. So we've seen how they can react and act like they're doing something to then how they can react and really show what they can do to put pressure on on a country or a partnership or an ally that's always like, sticking their finger right in our eyes, right? And then going, you need us, you need us. You know you need us, right? Well, it looks like they need us too. And they're exhibiting that finally, that they need us. Saudi Arabia needs us in this particular case only. And again, 
the midterms and the, the partisanship that's starting to be in, 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 uh, infusing itself with this in our relationship with Saudi Arabia. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.